Hello Spirit, as you may or may not be aware of, I am a gamer, but in my years of gaming I've never really got to experience many indie games. I was instead introduced to more prominent games from prominent studios such as Minecraft or Fortnite, so experiencing these types of games was new and exciting. Now I had recently acquired a 2 month subscription for Game Pass on Discord and bought a download a few games. These included Dead Cells and before you think I'm gonna absolutely shit on it, this is a praise video. Dead Cells is an action platformer game that has you navigate through multiple locations on an island, fighting different types of monsters. You play as a soul attached to a dead body, and the spin on the game is that none of your progress is saved after you die. Well, except for the unique runes you find along the way. And these can help you grow vines, climb walls, or even teleport through stones, and you are left with nothing but the experience of your former battles and worlds. When you're done, you can go to the Blacksmith's Apprentice, who gives you the, the chance to change your loadouts, attacks, and effects. However, they are random. Afterwards, you can finally go to the Ghoulian, who lets you choose one mutation with a limit of three. But if you beat a boss, or slash level, you are taken to another person called the Blacksmith. Giving cells to him allows for him to increase the chances of getting better loot throughout the entire game. Now for the actual run, each and every monster you should aim to kill while also dodging every attack and or doing it in a short time frame. This allows you to get more cells and a weapon, item slash trap or an amulet of your choosing. While they do give you that, there is a chance a monster or boss will drop a blueprint for you. However, if you die before giving it to the collector, that blueprint is gone for until it drops again. If you are looking to collect blueprints, you can use the magic mirror. It's yeah, another blueprint, but it helps you pick the monster and you go after them. Now onto the actual story. You're trying to get to the throne room with the king, but you can also go through other worlds with the DLCs Dead Cell has added. This allows them to give you another world, you enemies, weapons, and even outfits. They are filled with multiple types of enemies, or having unique abilities, such as the zombie who jumps at you, the pirate captain who shoots a cannonball at you and slams the cannon if you're too close to him, and much, much more. And that's basically the basic premise of the game, and I have had fun. I won't lie, I was very skeptical of how the game would run or look when I saw what the animated trailers looked like, to what the gameplay style looks like. But Dead Cells proved to me it doesn't matter what it looks like, it was a lot of fun. It's brought me to realise the money I dumped on the Battle Royale games could have been spent on games that would have brought me more joy than what I've had and felt when playing the games like Fortnite. In fact, I even bought the game so I could have it forever, and even bought the DLCs for the fun of it. This game has brought me the same amount of defeat, frustration and fun from any other game I've played as a kid did, and it was honestly fun playing this game. Now onto the review section. Oh, and this is going to be an Xbox player's point of view, folks. The mechanics are quite easy enough to use. A to jump, B to dodge, X and or Y for attack, RB for abilities, holding RB to sell slash bring out weapons from your backpack, and while it did take a while to get used to, I have played it every day for around over two weeks, which eventually became my muscle memory to how I play. I just want to say the combat is fantastic. While fighting every monster you face, you have to remember how to disable their attack and remember what they do before they inflict damage onto your character. Fight, learn, adapt, die, and repeat. It's what made the game so fun in the first place for me. And the weapons helped me make the game feel like a new experience. Because face it, you're never going to get the same weapons every time, which allows you to pick from the few you were given a selection from. It helps you give a new joy and a new understanding of the weapons you're using. The reward system is also satisfying. It gives you a reward for finishing the level or boss in the estimated time or the no damage it took during the battles, which is a thing to get used to in further levels. Speaking of which, the levels are so fun. 
each having their own twist on the world is what makes them so fun, as well as what monsters they contain or what blueprints they have. You can see the ups and downs of every level and how difficult they can get with the unique things placed around, like the sewer water, bombs at every corner, areas with spikes laced around the areas. You must think of ways to get past them without taking damage, while also doing it fast if you're planning to get the extra 20 cells and items. And I love the outfits, especially, well, these ones. Obviously not for obvious reasons, but to change the subject, I love them. I would have loved a customization for the cell on the corpse. It was still nice seeing these outfits in action, even if you some don't line up with reality. Anyways, I had a blast playing this game, and it led me to download other indie games such as Hollow Knight or Aragami 2. Both are just as frustrating and annoying, and very fun. Now I know I shifted from devastating news to hate towards a poorly made show, to appraisal to a game I just started playing, but I'm trying to do all sorts of content through the year rather than just art stuff. It allows me to edit better in the future since I still know it's dodgy. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.